fellow bookworm, September is dead. My name is Whitney and we just finished reading Different Seasons by Stephen King. So this one is uh, four novellas all put together. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned before, I don't really enjoy Stephen King, but I am pretty excited to talk about this one. So we will get into that in just a second. I did pick this book based on my sister. Her birthday is coming up this week. And so I did pick this based on her. Stephen King is her favorite author. I have a couple of his books, even though I don't enjoy reading them. So I'm trying to make my way through them and decide which I'm keeping and which I'm going to be giving away. And then today, you know, as long as nothing happens, I might still be going to Colorado. I don't really know yet. It's kind of a wait and see. But today, um, we'll go ahead and start Shattered by Dean Koontz. I also picked this based on my sister because, you know, the tail end of her birthday. So, um, we're going to be starting this one today. She doesn't like Dean Koontz, but all the books I have by him came from her. So, we're going to go ahead and read another one. Hopefully, it's better than the last one we read. We will see, though. And then I'm really excited. I normally introduce... The next weekly read, so for next week, in Monday's Book of the Month video, of course we aren't doing Book of the Month this month, um, and so I'll go ahead and intru introduce this here, but I do celebrate Christmas, and so this one is called The Immortal Nicholas by Glenn Beck. Let me go ahead and read the synopsis so you have an idea about of what it's about. So, it says, 13 time number one. New York Times bestselling author Glenn Beck realized years ago that somewhere along the way his four children had become more focused on Santa than on the meaning of Christmas. No matter how he tried, he could not redirect their attention away from presents and elves to the manger instead. Glenn didn't want to be the Grinch who spoiled the magic of Kris Kringle, so he had to find a unique way to turn his kids back toward the true meaning of Christmas. He decided the best place to start was by first turning Santa himself back towards Christ. That was when one of America's best storytellers began to craft a, craft a tale that would change everything his kids thought they knew about Santa. The incredible story he went on to tell them that Christmas Eve spans over a thousand years and explains the meaning behind the immortality and generosity of the man named Claus. The Immortal Nicholas has now been expanded and reimagined into this novel for adults, a novel full of drama, history, legend, and heart, from the snowy mountains of Western Asia to the deserts of Egypt to Ye Yemen's elusive frankincense bearing Boswella trees. This is an epic tale that gives the legend of Santa a long overdue Christ centered mission. In this novel, Glenn Beck fundament fundamentally transforms the figure that the world has that the world now mainly associates with shopping, all while staying true to the real story of the baby who brought redemption and salvation to the entire world. So I did get about halfway through this previously. Um, I already I had the sleeve in the spot where I had stopped. I already took that out, but you can still see where I stopped. So I read about this much um, last time I read it. And I remember enjoying it, so I'm not really sure why I didn't finish. It was probably during my reading slump, and I did that with a lot of books. I would just, I would put them down, planning on coming back, and then months and months would pass, um, and I would end up putting them back on my bookshelf and just never re-pick them up. So that's probably what happened with this one as well. But really excited. This one, like I said, we will start next Wednesday, um, and then the video with my thoughts on it will come out. I think the Wednesday before Christmas. So definitely look out for that. You know, even if I do end up going to Colorado, I'm still planning on reading this one because I really want to get that read this year. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and talk about Stand By Me. Um, so I am doing the uh, Festive Readathon, which starts the day I'm filming this, which is the 6th. Um, and so, you know, when you see this video, it'll have been going on a couple days. Again, I'll leave Steph Love's video down below in case you want to participate, participate late. Um, you can definitely jump in. But I was trying really hard to get this read before today, uh, so I could jump right into the readathon. 
Um, and I wanted to read my Throwback Thursday books. They're pretty short. So I'm going to get them done today first and then try to read one of the books I chose for stuff. Read a thon today. Um, but it was a struggle. <laughs> So one of the things I don't like about Stephen King is how much he jumps around. He did still do that in these novellas, but I think because they were shorter, it wasn't as noticeable. But it made me notice something else I do not like, which is how long-winded he is. It was like, get to the point, sir. Um, and so, yeah, I that drives me insane. I hate very long-winded, you know, just kind of rambling things. Um, my husband does that to me all the time. I'm like, just get to the point, like shorten it up and tell me what you're trying to tell me. So, and I can ramble with the best of them. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know. I just, I have a really hard time with that. And so the first one I'm going to kind of reference so I don't get them all mixed up, but there's four novellas. So the first one is Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption which I'm very familiar with that story because of the movie. I've seen the movie multiple times. So I was already familiar with the story, which does help because I kind of know where he's going instead of just being like, are you there yet? But even so, I kept like, how many pages do I have left to read? Like, how many pages do I have left to read? So that's what I don't like. I love his stories, though. I think he's an amazing storyteller. It's just I cannot get behind his writing style. So just in case you live on a rock and you never heard about the Shawshank Redemption, it basically follows um, this guy and he goes into prison for murdering his wife and his wife's lover, essentially. And the narrator is another guy in, in that prison. Um, and he's telling you about this guy, the the legend of the man, essentially. Um, and so, yeah, it just goes through kind of the story of how he got to the prison and then his time in the prison. Uh, and then I won't give the spoiler away just in case you never read it or seen the movie. Um, and so it just kind of follows along with that. So I knew the story well from the movie and just from people talking about it, but it still just drug on and on. So I made it through that one, and then the next one's called Summer of Corruption, which is Apt Pupil is the book, and that one was the longest section of the book, and again, it just drug on and on, but I wasn't familiar with the story, so there were certain moments that kind of captivated me, and I did find the premise of it interesting. So it's basically you have this like all-American boy essentially and he becomes fascinated with World War II and the Nazis and he actually finds a uh, old um like leader from that part from the Nazi party living in his town and so he kind of basically essentially blackmails him to get like the true story of what how things worked and how they happened um, and so it just follows them and then it follows like years down the line as he's going through high school and such and how that kind of affected his life and then the effect him bringing up those old ghosts had on the old man as well. Very disturbing, definitely very disturbing, um, but I did find the premise very enjoyable. I just wish it hadn't been so long-winded. Um, that was... that. I, again, I kept looking how many pages are left, how many pages are left. And then we have The Body, which um, this one is the movie Stand By Me is based on, which the, the cover, you know, calls that out. And that one, again, a story I'm very familiar with. I've seen Stand By Me multiple times. That one didn't bother me as much. It was kind of long-winded, as all his stories are. Um, but... At the same time, there's a certain aspect to that one that I really enjoy because it is a coming-of-age story. Um, and there's kind of a deeper meaning there, too, because on the course of this adventure, you know, the, basically the kids, uh, there's four boys, and they're, they're going to, they're walking like 30 miles to see a body, essentially. Um, and so through that, the course of that, like, 
their friendship really deepens as well. Um, it becomes a lot more honest. Like they see the the truth of each other, you know, instead of just kind of bluffing their way. Like the one boy at one point breaks down sobbing, you know, and they really see the truth of each other. And then the two boys have like a, a conversation um, about how life is going to be different when they go into junior high and high school and such. So that one was probably the most enjoyable out of all of them. Um, because one, I was familiar with the story, so I knew where it was going. And two, I liked that coming of age aspect and that deepening uh, of the friendship. But again, I still kept looking to see, like, how many pages are left in this book? Like, come on. Um, but it wasn't as bad because I knew, okay, like, they're at this point. They should get to this point soon and such. And then the last one's called The Breathing Method. And again, not one I was familiar with at all. That one I did find really, really interesting, but it did kind of make me mad as well. Um, like, the whole premise of it is there's, like, this club, but it's kind of, like, very weird, essentially. Um, and they tell stories, and so, you know, he's initially talking about this club and how he got into this club, but it's not, like, actually a club, and I don't even know. And then he talks about the actual story, the breathing method that one of the guys told. Um, and the breathing method, that part of the story, like the club part, yeah, it was interesting. But again, very long-winded. But the breathing method part of the story, I found, like, I wanted more. Like, I wanted that story more fulfilled. But, you know, he <laughs> kind of wound to it. Um, but that was pretty enjoyable. And... There was certain things, you know, it was talking about a woman giving birth and there was certain kind of stereotypes and such, which kind of got on my nerves. But then there's like a certain like oddball supernatural aspect and it is pretty horrific how it comes, you know, to conclusion. Um, it is pretty horrific, but like, yeah, that one was pretty enjoyable too. And that one, I didn't really keep looking ahead. Like, I did kind of th think, like, okay, you're going to get to the point yet. But I didn't keep looking ahead to see. Like, I I went to bed about 9 and started reading that last section. Um, but it wasn't very long at all. So, um, it's, I'll show you here. So, it was only, you know, about that big. Plus an afterward added onto it. So, um, but yeah, that one, The Breathing Method, was probably my second most enjoyable, just because it was a little, a lot less long-winded, but it was also the shortest one. Um, and I liked the premise of that one as well. I found it kind of interesting, um, the premise with the club and kind of all the secrecy around that, and then also the story itself of The Breathing Method. I thought that was pretty cool, so... Overall, I think if you're a Stephen King fan and you don't mind that long-windedness, I would say, you know, definitely something, if you've never read this one, it's definitely something you probably enjoy. If you don't like that aspect, but maybe you're familiar with The Shawshank Redemption and Stand By Me and such, you might enjoy this one. Um, I say if you're going to try a Stephen King book, um, this is probably the one to do because also you can break down and maybe just okay, I'm just going to read this novella and not do like I did and push through all four of them. So you can kind of break it down into different parts, you know, and the fact that they are novellas, they are shorter than his typical book, which does help with the long-windedness. Uh, and he doesn't jump around near as much in this one, so it's a little easier to keep track. The only time I had problems keeping track of the characters was in The Body, which Stand By Me is based on, and some of the older brothers and such, um, and their crew. I had a hard time keeping straight who was who in that one. But other than that, like, very easy to follow along the characters and such. It's just, I wish his stories weren't so long-winded. But, but yeah, not bad. I think this is one. I'm planning on keeping at least one Stephen King book on my shelf. And I decided after reading this one, I'm definitely probably going to keep this one, depending on how the others go. I think I have, like, Dreamcatcher and another one. Um, but I decided I'm going to go ahead and send Carrie on and keep this one in my collection for now. We'll see, though, once I finish reading the rest. But but really been um, 
enjoying kind of going through some of these books. Even though this wasn't my favorite read just because I don't like the writing style, I did find, you know, the different stories pretty enjoyable. And so I am glad that I pushed through and read it, even though it was dragging on and on. Like, it took me days to to read that. I started this last week, and it just, I had to keep pushing through. So I know a lot of people would have DNF'd at that point, but I was enjoying the stories themselves. Like I said, it's not the stories, it's the writing style for me um, that ha makes it difficult for me to get into it. So I think that's it for today. Reminder though, if you're not already, follow me on TikTok and Instagram. I've been doing the 25 days of book miss and it's been so much fun. Um, I have some books that I'm really, really excited about. There's, I don't know, I'll, I'm on day six right now and so I have six different books and there's only one that I kind of, well maybe two that I'm kind of, eh, but they still do sound interesting to me. Um, so really, really excited for that. I actually have the books right here. Let me see. Give you guys a sneak peek if you're watching this and you watch till the end. So these are the books I've gotten so far. But if you want to hear the synopsis and, you know, get more in depth, the books I got, go to TikTok. I do a full little video over there. And then Instagram, I have like pictures and like a clip of the video over there but of course at the end of the month I will be putting all the clips together and doing a video and then I'll be doing another video where I talk about the different books my most anticipated reads um and then of course there'll be updates later on as I'm able to make my way through those uh, but yeah so much fun loving doing this book tree slash advent calendar uh thing I think every day I wake up excited to see which book I'm getting and there's some really interesting ones authors again that I didn't know about um and the premise of the book sounds really interesting so I think I'm gonna find several new authors between this and my ABC challenge that I'm really really gonna enjoy so I'm gonna go ahead and leave you here there should be a throwback Thursday tomorrow so check that out but of course if you're not subscribed already please do so Please hit the bell notification um, because this month's kind of all over the place. But uh, hopefully in January I'll be able to get back to my normal routine. Anyway, happy reading everyone. Bye.